So how do you lay your numbers out on a raptor for a raptor on the board? All right, so we're going to use the number 16 feet 2 and 5 eighths for our common. We're going to use uh, 21 feet 9 inches for our hip. So first thing when laying out a board is you always want to lay them out the same way. When I lay them out on the board on the sawhorses, I will stand on this side where the top of the rafter is always on my right and the bottom of the rafter is always on my left. That way I won't get things goofed up. Alright, so the top of my rafters is going to be over here. So the first step in laying out this common rafter is to measure from the end of the board in three quarters of an inch. This is that distance that was, needs to be cut off for the common rafter where it butts up against the ridge board. Now, I could subtract three quarters of an inch off of here and then just go from the end of the board, but you know, how many people like to do that kind of math? So this deletes that process, so it makes one less error. All right, so I'm gonna measure in from the end of the board, three quarters of an inch, and I'm going to put a line across the board. The line across the board will be my slope, in this case, six over 12. So it will be on a six twelve. Okay, now, next step would be to measure from the end of the rafter down 16 feet, two and five eighths inches. From that point, we're going to draw a line that is parallel to this one. So that means it will be on a 6 also. Now we have to put in our bird's mouth. Well, how do we put in our bird's mouth? Code says that I cannot exceed one-third the depth of my rafter. So that means if I'm using a 2 by 6 I've got to keep it less than 2 inches. So I'm going to pick a number, one and a half, one and three quarter inches, someplace in there, whichever one. The thing you want is a seat cut large enough to nail. So you want to pick it a little bit bigger if you can, so that you have a, something to nail to um, when you nail your rafters down to the top plates. So from the bottom of the board, I'm going to measure up one and three quarters of an inch. Okay. From that point, I am going to draw a line for my seat cut. That line is perpendicular, or 90 degrees, to my slope line. So it has to be 90 degrees. In order for it to sit on that top plate, it has to be 90 degrees. All right. So you just have to flip your speed square over and draw that line plumb. So when the rafter's sitting up, it'll be plumb. All right? So then all you have to do is come back and cut this out for your bird's mouth. That way the rafter will sit on the top plate. Now, if you want to, you can also measure for your tail cut if you know what that tail cut is. You can figure it out and you can measure back from this point. You could draw your tail cut on there. If your tail cut has a seat cut, you could, nail, or could draw that on there. Um, that is up to you. Some carpenters like myself, I like to worry about those later. Once I get all the rafters up, then I'll come back and I'll cut the tails I can just chalk a line and get them all cut off all at once. That way they'll be all nice and straight. So that's all there is to it to cutting or laying out a common rafter. Okay, so this is a, a plumb cut, so the saw is set on 90 degrees, same as this. Okay, now moving on to the hip rafter. Hip rafter is a little bit more difficult. All right, we're going to use 20 foot, 21 feet 9 inches for our raptor length. This time, from the end of the board, we are going to measure in 1 and 1 16th of an inch. Okay, 
if you remember back when the hip comes in our measuring point is there so we have to cut it here so this is that 1 and 1 16th inch distance that we have to cut off because we want the point of our rafter to be right there if our common is here so from this point we're then going to draw a 6 okay but this time on your speed square there's a difference you look one line of numbers will have com at the end for common and then you'll have another set of numbers for your hips and your valleys the hip make sure that you use the correct line of numbers for your hip valley don't lay it out like a common you have to lay it out like a hip valley all right now from this line right here, I'm going to measure three quarters of an inch in each direction and draw parallel lines to this line right here. So I have three parallel lines. And I'll talk more about that in a minute when I talk about how you cut this. All right? Now, once you have your three parallel lines, then you can measure again from the end. You're going to measure down 21 feet, 9 inches, and you're going to draw a line. The line is going to be parallel to these three. So all these lines have to be parallel. All right, now we have to draw our bird's mouth. Now, you cannot use the same bird's mouth that you had here because this is a hip rafter hip rafter is over 17 where the common rafters are over 12 so the angles wouldn't be the same so then this rafter would hit sit lower than this rafter and then your corners would meet up and it would be a mess so how do you determine the bird's mouth for your hip rafter well what you're going to do is you're going to come up to your common rafter and you're going to measure the distance that's left. Okay? Don't count this bird's mouth that you cut out. You only want the part that is left. And what you're going to do then is you're going to measure that distance from the top of the rafter down. Okay? This has a term that goes with it. They call this drop. So we're going to drop the rafter the same distance that's left on this common rafter. From that point, we are going to draw our seat cut, which is going to be 90 degrees again to the line here. And that then will give us our bird's mouth for our hip rafter. Okay. All you have to do is set your saw on 90 degrees, cut this out, cut this out, and you have the bird's mouth. This will be the same as this, so it will sit the same on your roof. Okay? Now, what do we do up here? Well, we're going to have to cut these because we want to have a point on there when we get done. Now, instead of putting one line on one side, flipping it over and doing the other line on the other side, we put them both on the same side. Now, making these cuts will be determined by the type of saw that you use. If the saw is on the left side of the motor, it'll have to be cut one way, and if they're on the right side, it'll have to be cut another way. Okay? Basically, when you cut these, The, blade, the first cut has to have the blade going this way, and the second one has to have the blade, the second cut will have the blade coming back that way. That way when you get done, this part all falls off, and you have your point. Okay? So most circular saws, you're going to cut going up this direction with your saw on a 45 degree angle 
you have to set the tilt at 45 degrees to make that cut. So you're going to go up this line and then you're going to come down this line. Okay? Now, here's the important thing. When you cut these, you want to make sure that you leave half of the line. Because if you don't, if you get off to one side or the other, then this distance here will not match that distance there. And you want those to be as close to the same thing as possible. They should be 1 and 1 16th of an inch. So make sure you go up with your blade tilted that way and then come back with your blade tilted the other direction. So you go up and then you come back down and you'll end up with that point that will fit right into that pocket where the two common rafters and the ridge board meet. Now let's lay out our hip jacks, valley jacks, and cripple jacks. Now, which ones are which? All right, over here on this little drawing, I have the hip jacks come off of this board right here, which is a hip rafter. So the hip jack comes off the hip rafter. The valley jacks are going to come off of a valley rafter. And the cripple jack is going to go from a hip rafter to a valley rafter. So each one has to have its own specific types of cuts. All right, so let's look at the hip jack first. So I'm just going to kind of make up some numbers. Let's say we're going to go with two feet two and five eighths inches for our common difference. All right. So if you look at a hip jack over here, you'll see that it hits this rafter at an angle. So that means the top has to be at an angle. But the bottom is going to sit on the top plate, so it's going to have a bird's mouth. So it's going to be similar to a hip rafter. So we're going to have, because of this bevel cut, so we're going to measure from there, we're going to measure back one and one sixteenth of an inch, which is that angle distance that we need. Then we're going to draw a line for our slope. Um, in the previous, we were using a six, so we could use a six here. So we're going to put that on a six. Now you got to make sure you put it on the right one. Do I put it on a common? Or do I use the hip numbers? Well, this jack is like a common rafter, so it has to have common numbers. So this is going to be on a six common. Okay? Now, from this point, then we measure back along our rafter two feet, two and five eighths inches for our first hip jack, that would be the shortest one right here. We're going to draw a parallel line to this line. We're going to measure up one and three quarter inches. Draw in our seat cut, which is perpendicular to the line. And then we can cut out our bird's mouth. Now, on the top, since it has to hit this hip rafter, this is going to be cut on a 45 degree angle. So your saw blade has to be tilted at a 45 so that it will hit into that rafter. Now, you have to determine whether this is going to be a right cheek cut or a left cheek cut. So right cheek 
is this rafter, and the left cheek would be this rafter. Since we went back an inch and a sixteenth, now we have to go three quarters of an inch in one direction or the other. So if I want a left cheek cut, then I have to go to the right three quarters of an inch and draw my line. Now this is my cut line. That's the line I'm going to cut. That would give me a left cheek, which would be the rafter on this side of the hip. If I wanted a right cheek, then I would go this way and draw my line three quarters of an inch. So I wouldn't need this one. So then I would make sure that I came down my rafter with the correct angle on the 45. So then this would be my cut line. So for a right cheek, you go to the left of the line. If it's a left cheek, you go to the right side of the line. You have to get the correct one. On your, if you're doing a roof, it's usually one of each. They have to be across from each other. So if you do a right cheek, then you have to cut a left cheek of the same length. This one over here would be the same as this one. So you would cut one for this one. So you have two, four, six, eight of that first number, two feet, two and five eighths. Four of them would be right cheeks, four of them would be left cheeks, okay? So before you even go on the job site, you want to have this all written down on a, on a piece of paper so you can start just start marking them off. Make sure you get the correct amount of the correct length, okay? Now, what about a valley jack? Well, a valley jack is going to go from a ridge board right here down to this valley rafter. So it's going to have a slope on this side of the board. Okay? Remember, we want to put the top of the board over here, the bottom of the board over here. So this is my top, this is the bottom. So this top but you know, against a ridge board, so it's going to be cut like a common. So I'm going to measure back three quarters of an inch, draw my line a six on a common at the top. Then I'm going to measure down my board two feet two and five eighths inches. So that would be the first one right here. And I draw a line on a common, and since I need a bevel cut at that end, then I have to determine whether I need a right cheek cut or a left cheek cut, and I'll go on whichever side of the line I need, okay? So if I need one with a cheek cut on this side, then I have to make sure I go in the correct direction, left or right. So I'll go three quarters of an inch in one direction or the other, and then that would be my cut line, okay? So this one would have a cheek cut on this side. If I go on the other line, the cheek cut will be on the other side, okay? So make sure you go to the correct side of the line to get those in. Now, like in this case, you'd have to have one of each, so you could do one to the right side, one to the left side and you'd have your first two valley jacks cut, okay? And then you just add two and two five eighths, two feet two, two feet two and five eighths inches to get your next one. One left, one right, okay? So that's how you would do the valley jack. Now, what is a cripple jack? A cripple jack is a rafter that goes from a hip rafter to a valley rafter. So that means it has to be beveled on both sides. So from the end I would measure back one and one sixteenth of an inch, determine which side I wanted my cut on, so I would either go in this direction or this direction, three quarters of an inch, 
cut going up the board. To, it's on the other side, cut coming down the board, it's on this side. So you have to determine which direction from that center line to go so that it fits in your rafter between your jack and or your hip rafter and your valley rafter. All right? Now, to get the other end, you do the same thing. I measure down, draw my line on a common, go left or right. And if you look at these rafters, you'll see that the cuts are on opposite sides. So if I have my rafter, it will have a cut. If I have the rafter laying right in front of me, one cut will be on this side, one cut will be on the other side. Okay. Here's an example. You have a cripple jack. One cut is on this side, the other one is on the other side. Okay. So it would go in my roof, it would sit up in there like this. This would be hit the hip, this would be hitting the valley. Okay, so three quarters of an inch or three quarters of an inch. So that, but you use the same numbers for all of these, whether you're doing the commons or if you're doing an angled cut, then you have to use the one and the sixteenth because that's the diagonal distance for the rafters coming at an angle to a one and a half inch wide board. Again, they would have to be cut on a 45. Make sure you set your saw on a 45. This cut, this cut, this cut, this cut, they all have to be on the 45 angles. 